All right, fellow hobby enthusiasts and geeks, this is not the Unibomber. This is the uh, host of uh, Miniature Dork Hobbies. Ah! No! 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 An impeccable fellow with fine morals and great taste in music, as you all know. Um, I'm just here to say that there'll be a brief um, respite in content on my channel because I'm doing this uh, log building course and then immediately after I'm taking a job in another province in which case I will have to move. So keep paying attention to the channel and around you know fall I'd say you know September October we should be getting back to our regular scheduled excellence and lots of tips and other fun loving things. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. That's all for now. Bye. All right, so what I'm going to do is show you how I do some of my German camo methods. Um, one of them is to use this stuff, which is just like your basic blue tack. You can buy similar stuff um, specifically for like hobbies. Um, some people use silly putty, but you know what? I just use this cheap office supply blue tack. Um, and what I do when I want a soft edge camouflage scheme is I make like a more pillowy type shape, or if I'm doing lines, I'll do like a tube and, and not press this soft tack into the surface so that it will leave a feathered edge and you just go over very carefully with the uh, airbrush not to get too much paint and get too much buildup. <clears throat> so this particular uh, Jag Panzer, Jag Panzer 4, um, I got the idea from a, a book on Jag Panzers and uh, this particular camouflage scheme it looked like they sprayed little cloud shapes in, and then instead of filling in the little cloud shapes, they filled in all the negative space in between them, and it made a pretty cool looking camouflage pattern. So that's what I'm going for on this. Um, the good thing about German camouflage is that because they did their own camouflage patterns in the fields, you can do just about anything, and it's probably going to be at least a legit scheme. Um, <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is set up my airbrush with some green and then I will show you how I do that, although I'm sure we've all seen someone airbrush before, <laughs> but just for shits and giggles, that's how we'll do it. Um, and then at the end of the video I'll show you different um, methods I've done with the silly putty or the sticky tack to get different kinds of camouflage. It's, uh, you know, the camouflage kind of makes or breaks a German tank. If it looks good, the tank looks great. If it looks kind of crap, it's kind of so-so. Okay, I have my Darth Vader mask on so my voice might sound a little bit strange. Now we're going to turn on the airbrush. Maybe I'll take the volume down a bit on the actual video. And we'll do some fucking painting. Let's do it. So, I'll talk a bit louder. What you want is a very light coat. Because you want to keep that nice feathery looking edge. If you go in and, and do like a really heavy coat, it's not going to look so good. This is going to look very legit, so I'm just going to put on like many, many little thin coats. And we'll see how it ends up. It ends up looking pretty dope. It really helps to put your tanks on a... I just blue tack this to an old film canister. And really you're going to want to probably put more paint on, but I would stop. 
when you think, oh, I'm going to put a bit more on at that point, it's a good point to just call her quits, and then it's going to look awesome. You want to come straight down on your mask too. If you go sideways, you're going to get paint up on underneath it. And you want those like little pillowy shapes to form a feathered edge. So it looks like a soft edge camouflage scheme. Sometimes you can't help it, but... And really controlling the amount of paint you put on will help to give it a nice soft looking edge. And I just give it a careful look over. You know my, again, my... Your compulsion will be more paint. <laughs> yeah, but I swear, less is better. Here, less is more. Okay, I'm going to call it quick <laughs> on this one. And I'll uh, pick it up again when I start to rip off the, uh, rip off the blue tap. Okay, so we've painted it up with the uh, dunkel, no, dunkel, what's dark green in German? <laughs> Grün? No, yeah, dunkelgrün, um, I think, I don't know, anyway, it's a Jagdpanzer IV, and we got our little freaking cloudy pattern on, and I'm going to peel off um, my pieces here. Um, here's the thing, too. I should mention your your coat of paint underneath you should let that dry a good few days because if you don't um, this blue tack will pull off your paint job which will invoke a lot of swearing but you know I just sprayed the green on like 15 minutes ago and I'm already taking it off and I just use a big chunk of this blue tack to pull off the things and see how freaking awesome that is <laughs> so satisfying so you didn't have to go in there and painstakingly try to draw out this camouflage pattern in 15 millimeter scale. You just went in and sprayed lightly around and you can see because they're pillowy it looks like a soft edge camouflage. Um, yeah and you can make obviously if you want to do lines just make like a long tubes and you can um, I use a tool like this to you know add some changes in the shapes um, so that it's not super uniform you want your camouflage to be ideally very you know to break up the um, the outline of the tank obviously um, and you can get quite nice um, 
camouflage patterns uh, it really helps to stick it down to something especially when you're putting all all of these uh, little balls on it obviously and when you take this off you got to be careful not to take off some of the finer details but it comes off pretty easy like I'm not pressing super hard to get it off so um, yeah I sometimes you have to go a few times um, but it's worth it you don't want to be like pulling them off because there's a good chance you'll scrape the surface of your paint job. Um, you can come back in later with a paintbrush and fix some stuff to a certain degree but then you know it's you're gonna lose the benefit of that nice soft edge looking um, line that you get. So I'm gonna finish taking off all of these little bits and then I'll show you um, when it's done. And, and again, I didn't put a very heavy coat of the green on and look at how dark it ended up anyway. I just went on full strength because I knew that I was just gonna put a light, lighter coat on. And, uh, and there it is. Okay, here it is with all of the blue tack pulled off. So yeah, I like that camouflage scheme because it almost is kind of reminiscent of the the uh, the disc camouflage that came a bit later on in the war. Um, but again, I think the crew, um, they sprayed these on themselves with a compressor that hooked up to the engine. And I think they achieved this just by, you know, hand painting in like circular cloudy shapes and circles. And again, just spraying in. The negative space I think that's how they ended up with this camouflage pattern but uh, the fun thing about German camouflage is you could put just about anything and uh, you know you might not have seen it in a picture but it's still pretty likely that you know something like that could have been <clears throat> the other one I'm working on here is uh, a broom bar this camouflage pattern was achieved obviously with three layers of, of mask. Um, uh, I'm sure if you look at it you can figure out what I did. I put the brown down and then the beige and then the green in successive layers. So this is a Brumbar or a Sturmpanzer IV and it's painted um, in a camouflage scheme <clears throat> that was actually used for the 217 Sturm Abtelung um, yeah, so I will show a few pictures of, of tanks that I've used my silly putty method um, at the end of the video, so thanks for watching, and uh, I'll also post a link in the comments. I, I did a PDF sort of tutorial on how I do, um, how I paint my 15 mil tanks, so I'll post that down there for you to look at as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sons of bitches thought you would leave without engaging the light and subscribe buttons, didn't you?